Welcome back, everybody. Time to move into NA right now, and much a similar story to that of Brazil, where unfortunately we won't be able to bring you the finals due to competitive integrity. But we do have a great semifinal match for you here today. Yeezy PogChamp up against Mad Grizzly Gaming. Agro still joined by Gormizer here on the desk. This one's done already. Yeezy PogChamp is the best name I've seen in all qualifiers. Put good. them in the, the, the PPC. They're good. They're, They're going done. through. Yeah, They're they just done. get a message. They get a message from the admins like, hey. You're good. You named your. We really should give an award for best, best team name. name. Yeah. If only to discourage bad names, because there are a lot of those. There are a lot of bad ones. Like I think we should highlight like a top five play, like best player names every yeah. year or like every split, and then a Agreed. top top two, top three team names. And if we go in all history, I have to give credit to like Buh. That was a really mm. solid team name. It's okay. just the letter B. That's pretty solid. You can't really beat it. No, that's pretty – it's short and sweet for sure. Yeah. Speaking of good names, Easy Pog Champs got one on there. Ball and Barry. I, right. I love. I love that immediately. The man, the myth, the legend. Like th This is one of those names I think it's really funny because the whole reason – I remember it was the first time we saw it. We're like, who is this guy? Like, what a silly name, Ball and Barry. Like, what could it be? And then he, like, popped off that set. And it was like, okay, we get it. Like, you're balling. You're actually there. So he is – he's one of those guys that was floating around the scene for a while and has done well. Well, we'll have to see how these guys are going to do in this semifinal because we've seen two pretty quick games so far here. Quick sets, I should yeah. say, in both With Europe games, and yeah. Brazil. They've been pretty quick. Three O's in both regions. We'll see if this one can be a little bit more competitive this time around. Realistically, I think that means if you lose this first one, you should start shaking a little bit in Pack your seat, up. right? Like, you're just yeah. like, man, I don't know, guys. Like, two, I don't know if we can bring it back at all. It's definitely been a little more lopsided, which you kind of expect when you get to, to this level, I guess, or this week in an open bracket where it's just like, okay, there's still one or two, like, stragglers that are coming through, but they're kind of the front runners versus everyone else. Europe was kind of a different story where it was like, well, Sour Team has been trying this entire time, but they kept getting up against, like, District 69 or Chroma Space or insert another team like that, and it's just like, man, can't do much against that. Here you are looking at the last few players who have been on these big teams in the past who have now got, like, a team of their own and are coming through to try and prove themselves. We'll see if which team can prove themselves right now. Picks and bands ready for game number one. Ice Mines, I do believe, is what uh, is what we're going to be kicking it off with here for this set. Indeed it is, and it's going to be Mad Grizzly Gaming in that first pick slot. And there's so much that I think Ice Mines enables and disables in terms of picks. And this is its a very weird instance to hear me saying this and to feel me saying this, knowing that I'm about to. But Terminus could very easily be one of the top three or four p picks in this map. I don't think mm. he's going to be first pick. I still think... In my mind, if Fury is open, I, that's who I want first pick almost all the time. Wow. But he, he escalates on Ice Mines. Is it just because those long no. sight lines, he has a shield that can really nullify a lot of that damage longer term? Yeah, his siphon helps him out so much on this map, and there's so much that he can just cut down because of it. And admittedly, I think reanimate, it's kind of like sleeper, because there's a lot of times where it's like, cool, we're just going to run away. If you die in the right spot in Ice Mines, it's weird to plan around that, but like, hey, I die on the objective. They either have to get away from there or hide themselves and collapse into a small area, or they take, you know, an immense amount of damage in one area. It's not necessarily the safest place or safest champion to be up against. Well, Rom has been let through for the first here. time all day today, and it looks like Yeezy mm. PogChamp kind of insulated themselves. They picked the Genos early on. Yeah. They go with the Barrack instead of the Rom. Are you surprised that they don't just go Rom Genos right away? I feel like Barrack Barrack just synergizes with Genos incredibly well, and he always has a lot sure. of good damage from him, so it fits really well. Oh, Plus, Barrack can kind of keep himself so alive to make up for the lack of full sustain. And that Genos is the perfect counter when it comes down to it, where it's just, I'm going to stop you from running, I'm going to cripple you, and your CC'd now. The biggest thing for Rom, and it still feels dumb to say it this way, but that's the only way I can think of. You have to kill him, and that you just have to sure. kill him really well and efficiently, and there's no better way to do that than avoid Please crit. Just CC him, gone. Forehead. That's yeah. always the game plan. Furia Victor, <laughs> the last two picks here for Grizzly. Furia falling all the way down yeah. towards the back end of the draft, but Sky on the other side, and now a Grok for Yeezy. A bit of a, a huh. weird comp. How are you feeling about it? It's feeling very Ice Mines here <laughs> already for Yeezy. I think Grok is going to look pretty good against the Inara and against the Rom. I think there's a good amount of damage. But Victor is, like, consistent, whereas Sky is a wild card. And that's kind of the, the matchup that's going to make a big difference. That being said, 
Percent damage up against a Rom and an Anara can't really hurt you, so I hope this guy does well. Real ice mine hours here for game number one. Let's throw it over to Kresnik and a man who balls far harder than Barry, Dave Olsen. I don't know if that's possible, Agro, but I appreciate the vote of confidence anyway. Ball and Barry is in this game playing for Yeezy PogChamp if you're watching on Twitch or Yeezy GoreWow if you're watching on Mixer. Kresnik with me for game number one of this NA semifinal and a curious draft. I'm very excited to see how all of this plays out. The Sky, an interesting pick. The Grok as well. Maelstrom going to be putting out plenty of damage. And they pick a Rom into a Genos. Lots to look at here for both teams. For sure, but there's something I want to know first, Dave. On the terms of Bolin, where do you think you fall from Baller Steve to Bolin Barry in your level of Bolin? Well, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who's the higher level of Bolin between Bolin? Can anyone contest with Bolin Barry? I guess not, right? And then, ball, uh, uh, okay, look, I mean, if Ball and Barry is like a 10 and Baller Steve's a 9, I've, I'm like a 2 on the Ball and scale. No way. I mean, if that's the metric we're using, I'm nowhere close to either of those two guys. And nowhere close to the point anymore. This is the Inara. And curious positioning from her there. The rest of the team hadn't really joined the, the fight yet. And Yeezy Pogchamp off to a beautiful start. One tick of damage away from grabbing the kill onto Kronos. And they are able to do so. And... Another deja vu. I'm having deja vu. Deja vu. <laughs> deja vu is in this game for Mad Grizzly Gaming as well. 66% to start off for Yeezy Pogchamp. This triple support composition, which is more or less what it is, is doing wonders for them because the other team has great sustain on their tanks, but they're just getting, the other side is just running squishy characters with a ton of healing, a ton of speed, and percentage health damage from the sky. Those tanks are not able to withstand that, and Aran Romer are the weakest to that. Plus, no shields to stop this Grok from bouncing, so this Furia has so much healing that she has to keep up with. Yeah, Nara stepped a toe outside of the uh, outside of the base there and immediately was killed off. Easy Pog Champ off to a beautiful start here. That's gonna be the ultimate from Grok just to buy some space there from EV to Try to push back Mad Grizzly Gaming. He's able to do that and then some as he sets up a nice kill onto Geo. So the victor is down and Anara finds death one more time. Easy Pogchamp, Krez, they look unstoppable right now. Hard to stop somebody who's moving at basically 40% movement speed all the time with Dissipate in that Sky Smoke Bomb. Speaking of Sky Bombs, one goes to the back, but I don't know if it's going to find much of anything. Well, it does make Furia kind of think twice about moving further forward there, and that is the Barrage. Sets up a nice three kills for Mad Grizzly Gaming. It's going to be Sentinels popped from Vivian with a minute and 28 seconds left. Yep. Need to stay alive. Thought he could be sneaky, but Kronos sniffs that one out, and it's going to be a dead Vivian here shortly. Ooh. It's going to say. Would have maybe been a little bit questionable if he was able to trade out a kill, but the respawn would have been close nonetheless. But now with full reset, it's easy Pogchamp look to fight their way back in. And actually, I was about to say this might be tough for them, but look how Shiro's walking. He's just crossing in front of all of them, and he can't even wall in time. Basically gives them an entry pick. Yeah, this has been a rough game for Shiro so far on this Inara. I don't imagine that stops anytime soon. Yeezy Pogchamp have had that number since this game has begun. So you have a 4v5 just for a second here for Mad Grizzly Gaming with the Yeezy Pogchamp moving in, and they immediately reset it, but a 4v4 as Sky falls. But Victor again, kind of in a spot where he hasn't been able just to sit back and confirm a lot of that good damage that you need. Great Void Grip sets up a kill onto Kronos, and Yeezy Pogchamp, they're looking good to convert. Oh, the wall from Shiro oh, too no. blocks off Kronos when he's trying to leave. Shiro's got to be thanking his stars he didn't get that seismic crash off, and I don't think there's any way Grizzly can contest with no tanks alive. This is seriously a nightmare for the tanks on the side of Mad Grizzly playing yeah. against that composition. I mean, Vivian Sky are two of the best tank burners, I think, in the game. Combine that with a Grok who's going to be making it so your your squishies on your team have to get heals because of this constant shock pulse pressure coming in. There's really no way for them to keep up. I, I want to see the healing charts for a moment because the Furia is trying to keep up with this Genos, but with two other people healing, there is no way your team will ever be as healthy as the other side. It's been a lot of fun kind of seeing this healer utility sky come into the yeah. meta. It's been it's been great, honestly. The, the speed is also a kind of a big understated part of the kit, too. Sure. A lot of the speed effects, a lot of the base Two. movement speed, even One. Nimble itself as a card have been kind of taken down. So you can see Dissipate, 5, 40% for three <laughs> seconds. When that's also getting constantly reset yep. by Confound as well, that's so much more mobile than, than yep. most of the game is these days. And you put in some healing vapors as well, also at level 5. You're going to heal and be quick while you're doing it. That's a good seismic crash. Maybe sets up a couple, but Shucks is going to shrug that one off. And 
Shiro, he, he's the first death in this one again. Suddenly, Arnara is missing from the mid fight, and the rest of Mad Grizzly Gaming is going to try to pull back. But Victor's still up high, trying to confirm some good damage. Smokescreen not in time to save Shucks' life this time, but still 60% for Yeezy Pogchamp. You still have to fight into a Vivian, fight into a Grok, and that is not an easy task. Especially Rom into Geno specifically, tries to dash and touch the point, immediately gets shut down. That's so much of a sustain gone. 75% yep. DR just over an easy pog champ. Easily play their Ice Mines comp to a 3 0 start on ice. Yeah, and I think this is why I was so excited to see how this played out because, you know, from, from the get go, the moment you see those five picks locked in, this is the potential that it brought. And let's keep that gas pedal pressed down. Kronos, Shiro, and the Furia all back to base. And Rom is going to be soon to follow. He uses his ultimate just to buy maybe a quarter of a second of time there. But with two minutes left, a 4-0 seems imminent here for Yeezy Pogchamp. I think he just didn't want his team to make fun of him for not using it at all. I think I think it might be hitting that point. Just wants to get it get it spent, get it done, get a little bit of bonus damage. Yeah, you don't want to lose 4-0 with it right? it's still off of exactly. cooldown, right? I, I think he had to find some place to use it because it doesn't seem like he has any space anywhere else on this map. They do push Denkady down a little bit, but still no one on Easy Pogchamp feels pressured at all. Yeah, and unfortunately with that Rom ultimate down, that's going to be a dome shield that is going to sit free and clear until it's timeout unless they choose to focus most of their damage in that direction. And this would be a great time to use it for Dank Hedy TV if he chooses to drop down next to that payload. And Shiro falls, so does Kronos. And Deja Vu is seeing Deja Vu, seeing things twice as he is back in base. And Yeezy Pogchamp, they roll their way to a 4-0. That was maybe one of the fastest ice mines I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, how they got to be so fast, right? I mean, that was so much movement speed from the sky, from the Grok. That was probably one of the hardest games I've ever seen a ROM play. Yeah. Even if you get into the back line, right, you get on top of the target you want, they're so fast, you're never going to catch up to them. You have to run after them, chasing your own team. And they picked that ROM into the Genos, remember? They, they saw the Genos locked in, still figured the ROM would have been good. But talk about a tough game for front lines. We'll see those post-game stats in just a sec. The trend continues, even in North America. Another dominant game one where a team sweeps the competition. Gormizer, this time it was Easy Pog Champ really taking Mad Grizzly Gaming to task. Yeah, and we'll probably see a lot more of why when we see Sky's damage numbers and then next to it all of the, the healing numbers that came through for them. I mean, that it, again, going into it, it kind of felt like a very Ice Mines kind of draft. And, well, I was yes yeah in fact one of those kinds of drafts nullified specifically 10 and 2 i mean he was just running the show for as much as they could but it, it really is the <sighs> fact that cool your support directly did more more healing but then you had another thirty thousand on top of that coming from other sources insane and the damage numbers as well i mean 60k for grok 57 for nullified on the sky only one player in the 40s for mad grizzly and that's just into the 40s with Kronos on the Zen. Yeah. Uh, a clean, clean performance here by Yeezy Pogchamp. But Ice Mines, I don't know. Normally, it's one of those maps that tends to stall out a little bit and take a long time. But I imagine maps like that can also lend themselves to blowouts like this. Yeah, this is one, especially more recently, and this kind of encompasses the last split of, of competitive last year, where teams just kind of figured it out like it was like seven points consistently no matter what and then one team was just like you know what actually no how yeah. about not that anymore? we kind of feel like capping i don't know and so they they just all of a sudden four zeroed and it was kind of like okay well now this team is a dangerous team to take to ice mines because they can just 4-0 you on it and more teams i think watched that footage figured out what it was going right the composition that kind of opened up to it what champions were the ones that really lend themselves to a four zero and the play style specifically that, that had it now we're seeing a lot more often. It's kind of become a scarier map to go to. It's, uh, I imagine it's that initial sort of renaissance of how to play Ice Mines probably was born out of scrims being needed. To, like, guys, we got to go. Oh, crap, we got to play Ice Mines. And it's going to take half an hour now for these scrims to end. And you got to figure out a strategy <laughs> real quick to try and get that 4-0. In your Guys, favorite. I got dinner in like 10 minutes. We cannot be here long. It seems like every single team, by the way, today has had dinner in 10 minutes with yeah. the way these sets have gone. And <laughs> just like Easy Pogchamp might be hungry right now with the way they're playing as we head on over to Serpent Beach. Another Terminus ban 
This time is, I mean, on Ice Mines, Terminus yeah. very, very highly prioritized. How about on Serpent Beach? Yeah, I mean, this is one, like, he's not anywhere near Ice Mines level. Like, in my mind, Ice Mines is, like, definitive. Terminus will work here. Maybe win you the game, maybe so not, but he is much. absolutely going to be a good pick. Sure. Then you get to, like, Jagfall's Serpent Beach, where it's like, Terminus is a solid pick here. Again, not going to win you the game, not going to lose you the game, but just kind of slot in where you would need a good, solid front line. Then you start to see him fall off, I think, a little bit more. We've seen him a couple of other places, and he's been on the rise a lot this year versus what we saw last year. And I think it was just that kind of eye-opener. Once you see him on Ice Mines, you're like, this is how he works. Sure. All of a sudden, oh, wait, we can maybe convert that to other areas. Man, this is a beefy front line here for Yeezy. Some Torvald Barrick, first two picks. And on the other side, Matt Grizzly's oh, picked some decent so damage, hard. but I don't know if it's going to be enough to take it down as Sky locked in once again for Yeezy PogChamp. I mean, all I'm saying is that Torvald had a 100% win rate, according yep. to those stats, and Sky had a 100% win rate, according to those stats. They've got both of them. That seems like good odds. To yeah, those. Th you know what? If you're a betting man, there's definitely yeah. some numbers that are backing you up on that one. Oh and no, but Ash has 100 percent win rate. But Who it's it's. Who knows? I think it maybe comes in with the play rate. I actually I think I can maybe count on one hand how many times I've seen Ash in the last three sure. weeks. Sky has been up there. Torvald has been banned a lot more than we've seen him picked up. But I, I think Sky to plus Torvald. No, and on Serpent Beach with a Grover and a Zen, again, a lot of sustainability on this team, a lot of capability to keep you alive or maybe some others, and then a lot of melt. I mean, you're going to need a ton if you're this Ash and Khan. Like, your shields have to be on point, your yeah. lockdown has to be on point, and your DPS has to back you up so heavily or else the sky is going to run rampant again. This Drogo's selection, Drogo's is always a character that I look at and go, someone's got to try and shut him down. Is yeah. Sky the one that you're looking to do that? I think Sky can get back there a little more consistently. Depending on if Barrett goes tinkering or not, he could potentially be the one to help lock him down. But Sky's going to have to go back, and it's going to be very difficult for her because it's going to be like, cool, now you have to break through Ash, then presumably Victor, Genos, and get to the Drogo's. Like, you have four targets if you're this guy. Let's see if Yeezy Pogchan can keep the trend going here in North America for game number two. It's Kresnik and a man who loves leg day more than his own mother, Dave Olsen. Come on now. We all know that's not true. I did a leg day today, and it was the worst day of the week by far. And I also love my mother. Hi, Mom. I know you're watching. Serpent Beach for game number two between Yeezy Pogchamp, a name that I'm going to have to abbreviate, and Mad Grizzly Gaming. And they're going to stick with this Sky Kresnik, and Smoke and Dagger worked out for him last time, I imagine. It works out pretty well for them here again. Yeah, uh, another almost triple support e-comp, too. I mean, Grover definitely support, but Torvin Sky kind of debatable, at least off for both, but that's still going to be a lot of healing, a lot of shielding that Mad Grizzly are going to have to burn through with nowhere near as much healing in response. Well, my boy Dank Heady TV down on the point, 48% to start off for Yeezy Pogchamp. So great start there for them. And Mad Grizzly Gaming, you know, they, they've stuck with the Victor on Ice Mines. They, they think it'll probably bring them some success here in the Drogos is actually going to open up a nice little door there for Kronos to get the kill. Deja Vu, a nice double on that Drogos. Going to put them in control of this mid, but still lots of time to game. Yeezy Pogchamp, plenty of time to get back and fight. Yeah, Dan Keddy just overstayed his welcome a little bit. I don't think they were expecting the, the pounce from the Drogos onto the objective. A root catches him out, and you can see that CC from Grover kind of really coming in to help the team out. No, not really a lot of other CC in the in the team, too, so a lot of utility. They're not going to be running resilience. Beric makes it to the point, but not able to stay for too long, I don't think. Yeah, these are the important picks here. Whoever wins this fight likely wins the first point. And Dank Hedy starting it great for YPC, and now Khan just hiding back behind that shield. Then Shiro, unfortunately, is going to fall for his troubles, and that looks like point number one for Yeezy PogChamp. They just got enough of the percentage early in this game, Krez, that Mad Grizzly Gaming had too much time to make up and open the door for one more shot from YPC. They also managed to catch someone out early, too. By deathballing, they kind of made all their healing and sustain stack together. There was really no way for them to burn through it on the other side. And now Yeezy even has, on top of all that, they have an execute from the guillotine from the Zin able to immediately take someone out of the fight, make a game of 5v4 if they so choose. Now that that shout's down, they actually might go for it. It looks like Shiro's expecting it too with that yeah, dash out. Yeah, they're going to push their way in. The poison just keeping that healing mitigated enough. Nullify doing a good job on this sky. Assert dominance up, down in the doorway. Just locks him up for a second and keeps himself alive, but doesn't really find much more from it. Eevee is going to 
keep himself in range through time and space flew through didn't find much but did set up a positional advantage for the rest of mad grizzly gaming to move in this is where you want to be if you're a victor just pour down some damage it looks like the offensive push is going to have to wait for one more shot it's even freer for the victor too with chronos 10 on it there's no way for them to get on onto him there's no verticality on easy pug champ at all the only way they're really going to take him down is a zin alt up there which you want to use on a tank anyway or maybe catching him with a hyper beam from all the way back there on that platform. Yep. Even then, your dwarf's not in the right place, so Chrono's going to be super free on the hyper. Hear me out. Grover Vine to go one versus okay. one <laughs> against Kronos. I don't imagine that works out very well for him, but they got to figure out a way to deal with it because that's a uh, free barrage down on the dank heady. But when you have a Zin who's kind of free firing, despite how well that fight starts off, it's not going to end well for Mad Grizzly Gaming. At this point, it's just a Drogos. Deja Vu goes down. It's one, one after another, maybe, for Mad Grizzly Gaming here with 40 or so seconds left. That's the stun. But Shiro, not going to stay alive to contest. And that is point number two for YPC. They figured it out. Kill everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Just ignore the victor. Sure. Run past. He can't reposition that fast. Normally, I'm scared to hear you say that. If somebody says, let's ignore victor, that doesn't sound great, but it works out. Usually, that's how you have to deal with them, by, by pressuring them, but they just walked past him. Cronus had to sprint to the other side. And maybe everyone else a little bit too forward, not really playing off of that victor advantage as much as they could have been. So not usually Point not spawn. utilizing the comp to seconds. its best because they mm -hmm. want to set up a surround. You know, if they get the Drogos on one side, the victor on the other, and both tanks are just locking them down in the front, right. then they can rain damage on all sides with no response from Easy Pog Champ. By the tanks Three, going forward and two, trying to hold, one. that's kind of setting one line, which right. lets them pick them off one by one a little bit more. Well, there was a bright spot in the last mid fight for Mad Grizzly Gaming. About halfway through, they were able to regain control and get very close to capturing it. So Yeezy Pogchamp will look to mitigate a lot of that. The overpower did connect onto the barrack, but didn't get him fully off the map. Did set him up. Oh, no. That's a nice hyper beam. That's going to knock a couple off. Nice double kill there from Eevee Snurf. And Geo is going to pull one back for Mad Grizzly Gaming but not before the rest of Yeezy Pogchamp storms the gates. Mad Grizzly Gaming being torn apart here. That's five in a row for the sky. Yeezy Pogchamp right back on the point with 51%. Huge stagger too on that Ash, so that's gonna have to be the con that touches even though Ash could potentially be getting close to ult. It does charge pretty quickly. Only Tangan's taking so much free damage here. He's the only one moving into contest. He's just around the corner. He uses his commander's grab, so he's not gonna have that to get back in range to contest here. 99% becomes 100 whirlwind just to maybe start off this push on the right foot, but nonetheless, Easy Pogchamp grab point number three. Whirlwind is spent, still got two minutes to do it, and now one point away from taking the map. That's failure in communication. They had no one ready to move in for the objective. Yep. I, I don't know, maybe the Ash was screaming that she had it, even though she clearly didn't, but they just need to find their point control. They need to have it very clear about who's doing it. If you mess that up, that's the easiest way to fail on an objective. Yeah, they're, they're moments where, you know, maybe it looks like Khan is going to be able to drop down and get something going there for himself. But he used his commander's grab to lock down one of the members of Easy Pog Champ. Didn't have that up to close the gap on that point. And now after a speedy ice mines, this Serpent Beach is much the same. Six and some change into this game. A minute and 40 seconds left on maybe the final point of game number two. Ballin Barry still 11 streak on that Grover. Raj didn't find much, if anything, there. Instead, it's actually Mad Grizzly Gaming who are falling. Three down, suddenly make it four. Turning tail is Kronos. One final shot. Good sidestep just to stay alive. But it's now only two members trying to defend against a fully stacked Easy Pog champ. That Jorgos is supposed, is supposed to have no counters here, right? Right, Dave? Right. I'm not wrong in that? So why is he... In theory, Is sure. there a radar on the map that he's trying to avoid? Because he's flying way too close to the ground 90% of the time. Just He's just making it easy for Easy Pog Champ to take him down. Well, that was a big difference maker, wasn't it? In that first point fight, the, the Drogos was able to find a nice double kill, plug away some good damage, but positionally, maybe some questions here as we approach what could be the final engagement. That barrage is going to melt down some of those health bars. So this looks like... Death delayed for Mad Grizzly Gaming as Easy Pog Champ's final, now one remaining member, is going to get themselves out alive. It's still 35 seconds left, two thirds of the way there on a couple of their ultimates. Mad Grizzly Gaming, they don't have anything. Yeah, you might get yourself an assert dominance, but still a good spot for Easy Pog Champ. There's enough time for Easy Pog Champ to charge every single one of their ultimates yep. going into this, and only really assert dominance and Dragon Punch to respond. The Jorgas is also playing inside, out of sight of his victor. 
And yeah. it looks like they're going to be potentially surrounded in a second. And yeah, they're they're just not using this victor's damage well. Well, Shiro gets traded out, but Vaughn Barry, that 11th Street comes to a close. With that Grover falling two for two so far, and Deja Vu's gonna add one more. That's Dome Shield drop down, so Yeezy Pogchamp still feel comfortable about their spot in this one, not able to trade out the kill. Deja Vu grabs a few, and finally it looks like point number one will arrive for Mad Grizzly game. And did get the Dragon Punch out of it, so that's that's pretty solid, but sure. assert dominance still up for Mad Grizzly. That's something that could be honestly huge for them to go to the other side, being able to push onto their high ground, take Whoa. control from behind for them, and there's, as we know, there's no answer. <laughs> sure made an attempt. <laughs> there was a shot. The ragdoll flying into the ocean, and Rohan's on a deciding just not to cancel that stellar wind. He 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 made his bed, and he's going to lay in it. What is it? Frog Isle is beneath Serpent Beach somewhere, so he's, he's soaring his way off to Frog Isle if the wall didn't stop him on his way. Deja Vu, you, you brought up his positioning at the end of that one mid-fight. But still at 12, 4, and yeah. 3. I mean, those are a rough four, I think. Those four three, deaths came in impactful times. One. But this Mad Grizzly Gaming seems to hinge a lot on this Drogos. He's definitely a bright light on their on their comp right now, for sure. But you can tell he has to be yeah. with how their composition is on the other side. Again, there's no counter as long as he's putting himself in the right place. He just has to stay there. That's Whirlwind to start off, but a great snipe to return the kill. That's some support on support prime there as Ballenberry is back to base. Evie Snurf is going to try to trade back one, but plenty of damage for Mad Grizzly Gaming. Nullified's going to grab the kill. Kronos looking for a good target from this barrage, but doesn't get too much out of it. Finally steps back in, is nullified, maybe caught out by his teammate moving in. But Easy Pogchamp, they haven't had to step off the point yet. Mad Grizzly Gaming, they're getting the kills, but they got no percentage. And they lost nullified, but it's not enough. Salvo coming in above, pushing them back. But e even then, they're still losing the fight. Oh no, Deja Vu, he drops as well. 72% as Dank Hetty. That's a bit of respite there for Mad Grizzly Gaming. Evie Snurf does have that Hyper Beam. Could buy the space if need be towards the end here. Shiro is not going to be the recipient of that ultimate just yet. Kronos is going to pull away. Plenty of damage from Nullified. This is now maybe the point. You bring out that Hyper Beam, just push him back. He says yes, please. Yeezy Pogchamp, that's a 4-1. They got the sky early, but as the fight went on, she got yeah. back from the spawn. The bubble on her to chase down the victor at the end, I think, was huge. If that damage had remained in the fight, it might have been a lot tougher with that barrack dead, but Sky immediately takes down the priority target. That Torvald able to sit uncontested and yeah. just hyperbeam everyone else away. That's just better point control from yeah. Easy Pog Champ. I mean, there were kills for Mad Grizzly Gaming. You don't really convert it into much there towards the mid. Still some bright spots. The damage dealers, I think, had a great game. Yeah, I think so. The Drogos and the Victor, I think, did a good job. But again, not being where they need to be when it matters yep. most. Well, maybe one final game. A game three. Can Yeezy Pogchamp close this one out? Find out right after this. Well, it was slightly closer this time around, but the overall trend of one team dominating here today has continued. Another easy victory for Yeezy Pogchamp. But Gormizer, at least Mad Grizzly Gaming got one point. They're fighting back, and there's like a lot of moments where the score is showcasing, well, exactly what it is, where Yeezy is in control most of the time. But it's a little misleading in the fact that Grizzly have been able to put up a little more of a fight than admittedly we've seen out of Brazil or Europe today. Sure. They're keeping pace on some of these points is just not able to solidify. Like the first point in this game is a perfect example. They were able to take control, win a fight. They just did it so late in the point for Yeezy that they were able to come back, fight, and capture. I mean, these are the most competitive score lines we've seen. Nine and five for Kronos, 12 and five for Deja Vuper. I mean, th this is this is tough when you're when you feel like you're getting closer. I mean, 60k damage on this Drogos, but 85k for yeah. this Jin. That it was certainly the biggest brawl we've seen. Yeah, and it's, it's tons of fighting that has been able to come through. A lot of it on the side of Grizzly was facilitated by that Genos who had 90,000 healing coming down, which is ridiculous numbers for That's a Genos. That's a lot. Considering there were three sources of healing that Yeezy Pogchamp had, and all of them added up to about that 90,000. It's impressive. Granted, you could argue that Mad Grizzly Gaming had more to heal than you saw out of Yeezy, but sure. it still opened up a lot. But Nullified was comfortable on Sky once, was comfortable on Sky twice. I don't know if Sky is essential to their composition, but as of right now, is comfortable on Sky, could be going for a hat trick. And this is where it's a little bit tougher at times than in a game like Smite, where you you have that extra ban in the first phase, and then the yeah. later bans later on. You can afford to, to really target someone with a ban, 
is there any way the Mad Grizzly Gaming could ever even think about banning Sky in this next game? Man, that is the toughest question to try and think about. I think there's a realm where they could, but you just have to hope that whatever they pick up in its stead is something you can deal with. That's the problem with banning specifically damage champions. If you ban supports, there's like four or five that are going to be competitively viable that people are running. Sure. And admittedly, three of them are the ones that everyone loves, right? If you ban tanks, you've got a few that are going to be like the I'm going to win this game for you tanks. And then a few that are like Anara, where it's just like she's not going to lose you the game. She might not win you the game. She's just going to do her job. Point. Right. Yeah. yeah. But DPS, it's like, man, I'm going to ban that Eevee. It's like, cool, I'll go Maeve, I guess. Or, oh, yeah, I'm going to ban this guy. It's like, all right, now I will pick Eevee or Maeve, or I'll pick someone else. Like, you can't take out enough of them to make it worth your while. It's going to be a tough task, I think, for Mad Grizzly Gaming to try and claw back and give us a win for the underdogs so far. We haven't seen one all day. We're ready for game number three. Ascension Peak will be the map as uh, Yeezy PogChamp try and close out what would be a nine-game day they for us on the day. They could easily change their name, drop the Y, and just be Easy PogChamp from this point on. Right? Ooh, I like where your head's at, Gormizer. Nicely done. Look at that, though. Mad Grizzly Gaming do first ban the Sky. Man. It's a little bit better to ban it in first pick, though, right? Because at least it lets you control what your draft is going to look like yeah. with that top pick a little bit better. But... You're leaving open some pretty potent picks on the back end for sure. And what I like is they ban like Sky Zen, which both are going to be potent on this map, or at least the Sky with what we've seen from Nullified is going to sure. be potent. Bomb King, Torvald, again, both can be very strong here. But Barrick, Genos, you've got Furia, you've got Rom, all still in the pool. So many big champions that are going to be able to come through. And if you're Yeezy, especially against Barrick, this for me is a Genos Rom pick. Yeah, very easily, it seems. No, it's oh. actually going to be Genos Terminus. They have to have something going for them on Terminus because that's they've it's been banned against them twice now. Sure. And they remember, they left open that ROM on Ice Mines yeah. and let Mad Grizzly Gaming pick it, and then they beat it and pretty handily on that map. The key here would be Dome Shield, ROM ult demolishes shield. So the minute it goes up, Barrick loses his ult. Same thing for Khan. If he gets caught out, if he's trying to shield, the stun that comes through is just so potent against them. I still really like it for them. There it and is. And I think they are going to like it as well. It's just, it, there's there's so much counter pick against the Barrick that it feels kind of silly actually to not pick him up if you're Mad Grizzly here. Vivian also there to add even more damage to a lineup that Probably needs a little bit more, but certainly has yeah. a Careful tough here, front line to cut last. through. Tyra usually very good at burning down these point tanks, throwing that, that firebomb on the point. But is that going to be enough? I mean, I feel like Rom is one of those tanks that can play point tank and then can just chase around your back line for an eternity. Yeah, he can do uh, – he does everything and more with this map. A lot Get of good you zoning. a demon who does both. And, man – I like to say, hey, firebomb, percent damage, it's awesome, but Rom, you have to make sure he stays in it. And for the most part, he doesn't care. He's probably no. not going to be locked there for long. Luckily, you can, like with the cripple that has, isolate him a little bit more and maybe focus fire. But then you're investing a lot into just killing the one guy when there's four others around him. Game three, potentially our last one of a very quick day. Let's throw it down to Kresnik and a man whose friendship I appreciate, Dave Olsen. Oh, come on. How are you about to get me all gushy like that before going to game three? You soften me up throughout the first few, and then you just swing it home there on what could be the third and final game of this North American semifinal. Hit scan is the name of the game here, Kresnik. The Yeezy Pog Champs, they've got a lot of it between a Victor and a Vivian. But that's not to scoff at the uh, the Tyra and the Koga, but you, you did give me a look, though, when that Tyra was locked in. Yeah, I, I just don't think it's going to be as good on this map as Victor could be. You need a little bit more range, and Tyra, that's where she's been lacking forever. Yeah. Maybe they wanted Burn Monster to counter the Rom, but it, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. He just walks away. Yeah, normally, you know, you pick a Genos to kind of scare the other team away from the Rom, or the Rom is banned out, but you're going to get both here if you're Yeezy Pog Champ, and I'm worried about playing against that if I'm Mad Grizzly Gaming. And he's just gonna drop that shoulder, move his way into the back line, and you can see the respect the Mad Grizzly Gaming have to pay this ROM. They back themselves up a double kill now for Nullified. I don't know, man. Mad Grizzly Gaming, they are nowhere to be found in this mid fight. It's just been so many tough games for the tanks of Mad Grizzly, because Barrick and Khan, what are they realistically going to do into a Victor Vivian? They just destroy shields, and that's all that their sustain really is. Khan has his shout, but it's not going to last forever. It's just Stop so hard for the tanks to take and control any space. 
Can I see the the kills really quick? Actually, Vivian was able to grab it. Okay, I figured that as much. Nullified had all five of the first five kills in this game before Vivian snagged number six there for the, the first one for some parity. No kills just yet for Mad Grizzly. But, uh, you know, the, this victor has been left unchecked for so long, and I don't even know if it's unchecked. They've just been so focused on, on this front line. Easy PogChamps have busted down that door. And now the onslaught continues, a seven streak for this victor. All seven of them, all eight of them are kills. Maybe adding an assist here, but Nullified is feeling free and clear to doing whatever he wants. I think Mad Grizzly's just so focused on actually making yeah. something happen after not really doing much. You saw the Barrack pushing up on the stairs to the high ground. Victor was behind him the whole time. He didn't turn once because they just wanted to actually push something so bad. It's a dream start from the Victor here. Koga's going to drop himself down, pop that ultimate. Here's an inflame for Mad Grizzly Gaming, and hopefully you're able to win a bit of defensive space off of that. And they've been able to do so as three members of the Easy Pog Champ are going to backpedal their way away from that payload. But with a minute and 15 seconds left, still enough time for them to kind of regroup themselves. And now you look at kind of that first wave of ultimate starting to come online. Uh, overpower used there as well as the Inflame. Talk about the ROM ultimate through time and space. The Sentinels are going to be coming out soon. This is still very much in the wheelhouse of YPC. For sure, especially if that con is just going to try to get that aggressive into, again, Hard counter DPS, which is just what Easy Pod Champ keep drafting. So much pressure in front, and none of these tanks can stand any ground. 40 seconds left, and the respawn timers not necessarily in their favor. Savage now for Nullified. That's a 10 streak for the victor. Koga's, I think, used most of his energy there. Is actually able to get out alive. Nobody really turned around and addressed him. Might have had one more dash, but you have to address the payload at some point, and there's his ultimate once more, and there is a ROM ultimate waiting if need be. Dome Shield, that's a perfect time to use it. But unfortunately, Shiro's Dome Shield lasts maybe half a second before it does fall, but Yeezy PogChamp's not returning a lot of the damage that is being set up now by that front line. Barrage is there. They are able to open up enough space with Shiro going down and Geo back in base as well. The two front liners are gone, and point number two rolls its way in. All the ultimates go back and forth, and I, I do want to say, I don't know if there is a perfect time to use the dome shield against a ROM. It just goes away. Right, it just I, gets shredded. My 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 mind was thinking that's the perfect time for ROM to ult, oh. <laughs> an unperfect time for uh, for Barak to drop the dome shield. There's, You're correct. There's no good time for it. That this no. is one of the reasons why ROM has been so strong. Barak has been very dominant as a point tank, being seconds. good with every healer where Inara might falter with some of the less bursty ones, whether yep. it be Grover or Genos. Barak having the ability to pair with any healer, having great damage on his own, and having a ton of self-sustain when his healer goes down. Being able to just get rid of one of his best sustain tools immediately, mm -hmm. while also then immediately just giggling and running away, it's so impactful, and it's one of the reasons why he's been so contested through all these games. Well, Nullified has been so unchecked so far this game, only one death. He's moved himself into some of those green items, and that's not normally something you see when Cauterize is being applied consistently, and Nullified feels just fine buying into that one this time. Unfortunately, not able to grab the kill there, but Eevee Snurf still alive. <laughs> just drop right on through that Furia. And now with 57% still complete mid control for Yeezy Pogchamp. He could actually get pulled into the well here, but it looks like they don't even want to try for Whoa! it. Maybe gets him on the stun. Oh, no. Not the right angle to get him in the well. That would have been the best trick shot I've maybe ever seen. And Rom just considers it a slight repositioning despite the toss backwards. And now if 99% overtime is on, and it is lengthy, but with Shiro falling, I don't imagine a world where anyone from Mad Grizzly Gaming is in range here, but they want to keep going. A couple low health bars here, and with Sentinels popped out, you could get most of this payload push done right here. Yeah, and most of the team was low. They managed to get one turn with Deja Vu's ult, but I don't think they'll be able to follow up more after that. Barrage drops down, Nullified grabs the kill. Just going to move himself back, dodges out the Furia Beam. Maybe not the fight he wants to be taking, just needed another burst or two, but realizing that the bulk of his health pool, his team's health pool is down, he's gonna move himself right back to the mid fight. But this is where you gotta make your stand if you're Mad Grizzly Gaming. One final point lost, and you're out of this finals, but you are qualified to the group stages for a bit of a silver lining, but I don't know, Krez, nothing has really been going in their favor so far this game. Now, one person just keeps getting too aggressive and it changes every time. It can be Geo, it can be the be the Koga trying to push up on that objective, but they just keep falling one by one. 
And I like how you pointed out the Victor's cards. If I could see the Victor's build for one moment, I want to see if he's running high tier Predator. That would mean he's just trying to stack. Yeah. yeah. Predator 5, 40% lifesteal every time he's aiming down sights. Now stack that with, yes, diminishing returns on the card itself. That's a Victor that's even harder to kill. Since they're snowballing so hard, the, the Cauterize just isn't there yet to make him even a viable target. Yeah, they haven't been able to drop down and counter out any of this damage. And doesn't look like it's going to be happening just yet. In Flame, maybe his last bastion of hope here for Mad Grizzly Gaming is used. That's a double kill from the Vivian. Three members left alive, soon to be two. Once nullified, grabs the kill with the ultimate. Five members down, four points on the board. And Yeezy Pog Champs in easy fashion move their way in. That is a nine-game day for us here today. These finals and semifinals have been quick. Yeah, it was definitely... I can't believe it went so quickly. It is week three. I mean, That's this true. is the time you'd expect to see it more than anything. But still, I mean, even in the matchups that could have been more even That's had right. the teams that we recognized a lot more, EU, still dominance from all sides. And that, honestly, it's a good sign for those teams moving into these group stages against the weeks one and two teams. Well, despite not grabbing any wins here today, Mad Grizzly Gaming find themselves in the group stages. We'll be broadcasting those a week from today. But for one final time, we'll go back to Ryan Agro Bailey to take us home.